Hey folks, Kenny Johnson here. For those of you that don't know me, I am officially Keysight's Power Integrity Program Lead. Uh, I'm also one of Keysight's Probe, Interconnect, and Low Power Experts. Recently I gave a presentation on Power Integrity and, uh, and a nice little demo with it. And a lot of our peers uh, came up to me afterwards and said, Hey Kenny, can you go ahead and videotape this? Uh, so that we can share it with those that weren't fortunate enough to be at the event or maybe with other users and things like this. So that's the spirit of this. Um, so before I dig into it, I kind of want to frame this up. So we're talking about power integrity and power integrity is officially the study of the effectiveness of the conversion and delivery of DC power within inside a product. Sounds pretty complex, right? But really, all it's saying is we just want to make sure that the DC supplies are nice and solid. Um, I like to kind of frame it up this way for people out there in the world. There was a quote I saw from an industry expert. He says, in his experience, there's two types of people in the world. Those that do the power integrity work and those that don't. And you can usually tell the difference quite easily because one of them makes a really good product. And it's because product functional reliability is directly proportional to the quality of the DC power inside that product. It's kind of intuitive, you know, if you think about it, if the thing's got like cruddy DC power, it's not gonna be very reliable. If it's rock solid, of course, it's gonna be a reliable product. And so what I've done today then is I've got this little uh, board here. It's kind of an IoT development board. And these are pretty common. You can get them all over the place. And the way they're set up is, uh, it's kind of a baseboard that you can program really easy. And then there's these other things that they call like shields, things that you can plug in. So if I wanted to like kind of breadboard my IoT device, like this is a proximity sensor that does time of flight. Well, I could plug that in and like build up my code around this thing, make sure the app is working and the data is good. And then once I'm happy with it, then I shrink down this board and this into like my final form factor, package it up and I'm off and running. And so this, uh, this IoT board that we've got going today then um, I actually have to give a thanks out to one of our colleagues in Japan. Uh, Snooki-san was the one that originally uh, pointed this out to me, and I thought it was a genius idea, so we're taking it and running with it. But this IoT board, we've got it programmed right now, um, and we're probing some of the uh, um, I.O. on the board, and so you can see it's flat, doing nothing, it's just idle. Then it counts up, and then we've got some simultaneous switching. And you'll see that I'm actually probing those with the uh, digital channels on the scope. And see, when I talk to a lot of our users, they really like that perspective because they can see analog things like power in context with what the software is really doing. So in this case, we can see the software progression. You know, we're telling it, okay, be quiet, then count, then simultaneously switch, then be quiet again. So now if I was a developer of one of these IoT products and I took the advice of many of the experts out there and the suppliers of these things, first thing I'd do is I'd go through and I'd probe and check to make sure that my power supplies look good. And so I've got a typical just 10 to 1 probe hooked up there. And that's what I see most people use most of the time because it's very common. In this case, it's a passive probe. It could be an active probe, doesn't matter, but it's a 10 to 1 probe. And so I'm gonna turn this on and what we end up seeing there on the screen is we've got the, uh, we've got the power supply and uh, it looks like, yeah, it's about 3.3 volts. It looks like it's kind of stable. And then we can see some noise happening here around that simultaneous switching. And then, you know, to be honest, I can't really tell. Maybe there's something going on after it calms down or maybe not. Well, that's the problem with kind of these probes and why we like to use the specialized tools, the power integrity probe or the power rail probe. So if I go through and I take this, I've got it running again, and I'm going to turn on the power rail probe. I've got them probing the exact same spot on the board. So I turn that on, and now we can see a much cleaner picture just when you compare the two, a lot, lot more detail. And in fact, I'm going to get rid of that, that uh, 10 to 1 probe because it's so noisy. So I'm going to turn that off real quick. And so now as we look at this, we can see, well, the thing is idle, and then there's some wiggling as we're counting up. We definitely see some noise on the supply when it's simultaneously switching. And then, yeah, there's some, some garbage going on afterwards. Well, see, that was intentional. What, we, what we've programmed this thing to do is after it gets done the simultaneous switching, we tell the microprocessor to go calculate some random numbers. But this is very similar to what happens with a lot of these IoT products because maybe somebody's turned on the Bluetooth and then they forgot to turn it off somewhere in the code. And so 
th you'll look at things, it looks quiet, but something's yanking around the power supply. What's going on? Well, in this case, I know what's going on, but this could be something like Bluetooth or something else. Anyway, so we've got that. And then the next thing I might do if I was a user, because I'm doing an IoT product, or maybe something that's portable, and I'm worried about power consumptions, I'd say, hmm, what about power? Well, I've also got a little current probe hooked up. These boards have these great probe points all set up for the current probes, where you can just go ahead and, and uh, uh, make contact with the connector on there. So I turn on our uh, high sensitivity current probe here, and I'm gonna hit stop. And we can see the waveform here to where, okay, so when we start counting up, yep, we're definitely drawing some current. Um, and then it kind of goes to like a steady state level that's raised up during the simultaneous switching. And then, yeah, we're definitely aching around the current over here uh, while, we're, while we've got that random number generation going on. And again, that could be something like you've left the Bluetooth on or you've got some codec running or some other part that's operating, but you don't know it. Well, this is an easy way to track that down. And, you know, a cool thing I could do, too, is I could actually go through and make a math function out of this. I could go through and turn on math. And I could say, we're going to do multiply, we're going to do uh, channel 2, which is our voltage, times channel 4, which is our current, voltage times current, that's power. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn that on and go see that. And it's kind of intuitive, as you would think, that the peak power is kind of coming over here by this peak current, but there's a measure of power in milliwatts of what's going on on this device while it's running. Now, another thing that somebody might point out is they might say, you know, it's kind of interesting there with that uh, simultaneous switching, how you're yanking around the supply, but it looks like the current isn't, isn't responding. Well, that's because this is actually a kind of a low bandwidth current probe. Now, what it's doing is it's giving me the proper RMS value. I'm going to go a little deep for just a second here. See, what happens is if I measure a spike with high bandwidth, I get a narrow, tall spike. If I measure that same spike with low bandwidth, it gets flatter and wider. The average or the area under the curve is the same by both measurements. So if I measure the area under the curve here, it's accurate for how much power I've pulled out of the device, out of the battery, but I'm missing the, the peaks. So if I said, well, I'd really like to know what those peak voltages are, I simply just have a, uh, one of our differential probes uh, hooked up to that same probe point, and I can turn that on, and then here's these spikes, and I'm going to stop this and zoom in so you can kind of see a correlation here that when the voltage was spiking, so was the current, right? So there's the green, it's spiking, and there's the current. I can use this probe then to go through and pick out what those those uh, peak current spikes are. So I think that's all kind of neat. Now, I want to bring up this point about the power integrity. See, this little board suffers from something that a lot of um, affordable electronics suffer from, and that is, is that they've got a form factor and a price point that doesn't support quality power integrity. See, if you think about something like a server or some of these other exotic things like the inside of this oscilloscope, we've got many power planes and ground planes, so we can make sure that the power is rock solid. With something like an IoT device, um, we've typically only got like a couple of layers, so we don't have a power plane and a ground plane. We have power traces and ground traces, and so it's really hard. It's a challenge for those things to have good power integrity. And as we know, is if we yank around the power too much, we're going to start getting errors in the system. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you right now. So I'm turning off a couple of channels that we don't need here, and I'm going to get rid of this math function because we don't need that also. So I'm going to turn that off. And now we've got this thing running again. And some of you with a good eye might have noticed that every now and then it seems like that glitches. Oh, right, like I saw one. Now that's not my software. I've got this thing programmed to do the exact same thing. Count up and then switch simultaneously, lather, rinse, repeat, just do that over and over. So what's the glitch? Well, that in fact is dropped bits due to power integrity. Now those could be kind of hard to trigger on. I could sit there and just kind of go single and hope that I get one every now and then. Or in this case, I've actually made use of our InfiniScan and that's under our trigger menu. And so when I pull up InfiniScan, what you'll see is there's uh, some rectangular regions that I can create where I tell the scope uh, to use those as trigger conditions. So use these zones to trigger on if the signal goes through it or doesn't go through it. And I've pre-populated a couple of these already. Over here, 
in this uh, waveform. And I've said, you know, if it doesn't intersect those, then trigger on that. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the scope in triggered mode. And let's go see if we, oh, well, we caught one right away. So look at that. We dropped a bit right here. Now, in real life, what's happening there is that is power supply induced jitter or power supply related hardware failure. See, what happens is as the voltage changes to a device, as the voltage moves up and down, the delay through that device changes. It gets longer and shorter. And so what likely happened here was something didn't see a clock or something was on for too short a time for it to realize that it got the, you know, that it didn't see the clock or the data was, was uh, corrupt. And so this can, if this was like a, a real IoT device, this is my app hanging or this is my device uh, uh, reading out bad data to memory or memory corruption or writing out bad data over Bluetooth. And so it, this illustrates then, there, there it does it again, right? So this one, it's got a pretty uh, predominant bit that it drops right there that's, that's just a power integrity problem. So kind of summarizing here then, what I've done is I've just taken this little IoT development board, I've done no modifications to it, I've just written a simple program for it, and we went through and we checked the power supply to look at how stable it was. We saw that it's really noisy during that simultaneous switching. We also measured the current with a little current probe. We captured those very high frequency spikes using a differential probe, and then we used zone triggering to actually isolate the problem. And that's very powerful stuff if you're a user that's trying to develop these things.